This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. Something I want to ask as it pertains to the Time Slitters games, how many of you spent a lot of your time with the local and offline multiplayer? Was this where you spent a lot of your time with the game? Was it something you would revisit day to day, week to week, just toying around with all the settings, options, and coming up with new and fun combinations? Would you have your friends over and then amplify the experience as well? For me, this was a huge part of my time with the Time Slitters games. And yes, it had a glorious amount of single player content and other modes, but if I had to look at all my playtime with it. it was probably split between playing the multiplayer offline by myself with bots or in split screen with those bots with friends too. As a result, this would have me comparing other shooters and just other games in general with what Time Splitters was able to provide, and Time Splitters would always beat them out. I enjoyed online multiplayer and I have a lot of great experiences with it. But the local play, the split screen, bots, and honestly all of that other stuff, nothing has ever beaten those experiences. This just might be my own personal biases talking. But I just love my offline content, including the multiplayer. Gaming preservation is an element that is continually brought up within many gaming discussions. It is something that is very important to many gamers. There's a large group of people that just care about the next thing, the current thing. And then I would argue that there is a large group as well, who is very invested in keeping their old favorites alive and accessible for as long as they can keep playing games and then to ideally have them go further so that future generations can play the same greatness they had. But when you have games where the multiplayer portion is beloved, and most of the player base has moved on, or the servers are down, that can effectively kill off part of the game, rendering part or even half of a title inaccessible. Now there are solutions to this. Maybe a talented bunch of the fan base, usually PC gamers of some sort, are able to work out to keep the game alive. Or maybe the passion of a gamer or a talented developer are merged, and something new is created to be a spiritual successor to their favorite game. In other cases, the original developers of the game have the foresight to include options that would essentially prolong and thus preserve multiplayer portions, and honestly have them forever. Through the use of bots is one of the best ways to do this, and Time Slitters provides some of the very best examples when it comes to this. The vast array of characters, their individual stats, and the large number of them that can be used in multiplayer matches that can then keep Time Slitters multiplayer going forever. And for some, and maybe even more, for many of us, this was how we played and enjoyed the multiplayer portion of Time Splitters. I never played much multiplayer online at that time, but I was always excited when bots were included, especially when you could tweak the settings of how challenging they are. You could really make it so that you have a more breezy match, something easy to get you started, and then ramp it up to how difficult you want it to be. Now bots were a huge part of preserving and being able to enjoy multiplayer fully offline. Because without any players, you really couldn't have a match, but you need to have options for the player to toy around with. The more the better, because that means that you really aren't going to grow tired of a particular game, and in this case, Time Splitters. Free Radical makes extremely strong cases to keep this portion of their game the best it could be. The many maps you could select, even old favorites returning depending on the game, modes ranging from anything deathmatch related to more objective based stuff with other cool variations like Shrunk, Vampire, and even Assault, which felt very Battlefield-inspired, or maybe Time Slitters did at first. I don't know, but either way, that mode is a lot of fun. Then you have the individual settings and options that you can tweak in each of the matches, like the score limit, method, along with time limit, one shot to kill, if players should even start with a weapon, and the music selection, along with a lot more. And with Time Splitters having some of the best music in the business, having this option was great. And with each new entry, old favorites would also return here too. Then came the weapon selection. There were plenty of presets to toy around with. But even better is that you can make a series of custom weapon sets. Going crazy like everyone starting with rocket launchers or maybe just having a bats only match. Time splitters could be both really cool and really silly, and most of all, always entertaining. If every game that had multiplayer of some kind included options that time splitters provides, then we would always be eating like kings. But then again, this is one of the many reasons why time splitters manages to deliver and in this case, kind of overachieve in the best possible way. The action is preserved forever and always. 
I may seem like a broken record when talking about older games, but I think a lot of this stems from me having a lot of rediscovery and love of older games now. It was always there with me. I grew up with a lot of the stuff, especially with Time Splitters. I spent a lot of time with it then for years, but then there was a time around the PS4 generation where I had fond memories of the past, but I never actually re-explored them. I was always looking to the current day stuff, or looking for something new to try out. I do still like looking for awesome new games, like what indie gems could be out there, along with some AAA games that might seem like they need some more love and care, because they aren't getting the attention they deserve. But as I kept doing my YouTube channel, about towards the end of the PS4 generation, and the start of the next, I was starting to look back even more. Around this time, I was making a pivot for my channel and myself. I was getting frustrated with much of the modern nonsense. And like I have a library of so many great games that I haven't played in forever, so why bother just focusing on just modern titles? I thought it would be a good idea to go back and play some of these awesome ones that were from a much better time. Nostalgia is very powerful. And what is even better is when you play an older game and it manages to deliver or even re-deliver where you have that rediscovery. You remember loving it and now playing it again and maybe even a decade or more later and then falling in love with it all over again. Pretty much any time I boot up a Time Slitters game, I get that feeling. Like I said, I miss the days of having fun split-screen parties with all the options, modes, and of course bots that Time Slitters can provide. Sure, we always want something to work for and earn. Time Splitters provides that, but once you earn everything, what are you left with? A great game with great minute-to-minute -minute gameplay, along with all the glorious positives that I still haven't talked about. Local multiplayer is something that we don't see much anymore. Most of the focus is on online play. So when having opportunities to play these older games, I think there still is an importance to have those options. I understand that maybe most of the modern audience would prefer their online options, but for some of us that want more of the good old days, I think outside of having some of these retro titles coming back, newer games should also try to make an effort here too and maybe even cater to those fans. But for the time being, we have time splitters among with other titles keeping that spirit alive. Are local options important to you? Whether that be local multiplayer with bots or just split screen co-op, is this something that more modern games should continue to provide, or at least try to? Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you can help to keep this channel going strong, and this allows me to be able to do more for my awesome audience. Please check out the links in the description and pinned comment for ways to support the channel. And most of all, thank you very much for watching.